In this video I'll solve question 3 of the Cayley Olympiad paper from 2022. The Cayley Olympiad is sat by students who've done really well in the UKMT's Intermediate Maths Challenge. It's aimed at students in Year 9 in England and Wales, or students ages 13 to 14 if you're comparing with other parts of the world. Depending which year group students are in and how well they've done, they might progress to either the Kangaroo Rounds or the Olympiad Rounds, can be the Grey or the Pink Kangaroo, or the Cayley McLaurin or Hamilton Rounds, depending uh, what year group they're in. These are some of the most challenging problems for students of this age group, and unlike the uh, Intermediate Maths Challenge and the Kangaroo Rounds, the Olympiad Rounds do require students to give full working in their answers. So this question would be worth uh, 10 marks in the Olympiad Round. The best way to practice for these competitions is to head over to courses.mathsaurus.com where you can try one of my free preparation courses. So you can work through this question and all the others in this paper with video hints as well as solutions. And there are also courses for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, for the Kangaroo, for the Junior and Senior Rounds and loads more over there as well. So do head over there, totally free to sign up, no payment details are required to access these free courses with the UKMT questions. So I hope to see you over there at some point, but for now let's get on with this question right here on YouTube. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So in part A, it says, suppose each letter in this equation stands for a different digit. We want to prove there are no solutions. So we've got to choose A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H to be all the different numbers from one to eight and show there's no way of doing this. Showing there are no solutions to an equation can actually be harder than showing there is a solution sometimes because you know, there is no answer to find, right? So there's no sort of neat conclusion where I can just sort of sometimes fudge a bit of the working perhaps and convince someone I've got it, you know, by showing them I've got the answer. We've got to be really clear about our logic, about why this is not possible. So I think to begin with, uh, the first thing I'd like to do here is just to multiply this equation by 10,000 and say that this problem is equivalent to saying A, B, C, D plus E, F, uh, G, H is equal to 10,000. You know, it's always easier to work with whole numbers and decimals. It's exactly the same problem. And if we write this as uh, a sum, as if I was doing it like this, right, um, and I add them together, and I know I've got to get 10,000, well, I know to begin with that when I add D to H, I've got to get a zero here, and they can't be zero, uh, so it must be that D plus H is equal to 10. And as I start writing this sum down, um, okay, I see I get a carry of one here. Now C plus G also has to give us a zero, but I'm adding this one that I've carried, so it must be that C plus G is equal to nine, uh, and then I carry a one again, um, and then B plus F has to be nine because uh, of the carried one as well um, to make 10 in total. So I have B plus F is equal to nine, and then similarly A plus E is nine, and I finally carry the one and get 10,000. So I have these uh, four equations. Now you need to write a few more words in your answers uh, for a full solution here. I'd say multiply both sides by 10,000. Uh, as we, you know, and just say, you know, as we do the sum, we see G plus H is 10 because we carry a one, C plus G is equal to nine and so on. Uh, and now when I think about the fact that A, B, C, D, E, F um, and G all have to be between uh, one uh, and eight, there's a couple of ways of, of showing this. Um, if I just add all these equations together, right, um, what do I get? I get A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F plus G plus H, add them all together, and uh, 10 plus uh, 3, 9, 10 plus 27 is 37, right? But if I add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 uh, plus 8, you see uh, we get 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, um, 28, 36. Okay, so uh, so this actually shows that it's impossible, right? I can't choose, I can't assign uh, each of these numbers to A to H uh, in such a way uh, that they add together to give 37 because however I do it, they're all going to add together to give 36. You could also consider the different pairs that add together to give 9 and say, well, if I make them 1 and 8, 2 and 7, and 3 and 6, they have only got 4 and 5 left and they add together to give 10. But it's kind of the same um, as this argument. And I think this way I've written it down here is a much neater way of expressing that actually. Um, so, uh, so let's just say it's not possible. Again, you should use quite a few more words uh, than I have in writing this up. Now to do part B, I'm going to keep this introductory working here and uh, we are going to consider the different options, right? So these combinatorial counting problems come up a lot in the Olympiad and they all have slightly different twists, all variants um, on some 
key themes. But we're going to start here by looking at d plus h equals 10, right? And let's think about what options uh, we've got for uh, d and h. And actually, if I could use good notation, I might just say for the pair d, h, and write it like this, and then uh, to get them to add together to give 10. Well, I can't do 1 because I'm not allowed 9, um, but I can do 2 uh, and 8. I can do 3 and 7. I can do 4 and 6. I can do 5 and 5. I could do 6 and 4. I could do 7 and 3. I could do uh, 8 and 2 that way around. Uh, so in total, uh, that's 7 uh, options. Okay. Um, so uh, now, at this time, it tells us that we're allowed to repeat digits. So it's not one of those problems where, like, having used 2 and 8, I've now suddenly got to restrict my options or change my options depending on what happens, right? Um, when I look at the options uh, for C and G, I'm just allowed to use all the numbers again. So I just need two numbers that add together uh, to give 9. So I could have C uh, is 1 and G is 8. I could have um, C is 2 and G is 7. I could have 3 and 6. I could have 4 and 5. I could have 5 and 4. I could have 6 and 3. I could have 7 and 2. And I could have 8 and 1. So uh, you can see this time we've got uh, 8 options. And then similarly for B and F and for A and E, it's exactly the same, right? Uh, I'm allowed to use, I'm allowed to repeat the numbers if I want to. Uh, so again, we've got uh, eight options and we've got uh, eight options here. So uh, now with combinatorial problems like this, if I want to say how many options are there in total for all the choices, I multiply them together, right? Um, if you think about it, for each option I've got here for D and H, Right, I can choose any of these options. So there's going to be just choosing D, H, C, and G. There's going to be 56 choices here because I can do 2 and 8 with 1 and 8, 2 and 8 with 2 and 7, 2 and 8 with 3 and 6, right? 1, 2, 3, etc. Get 8 from that one, and I'll get 8 coming out of this one, 8 coming out of this one, and so on. So 7 times 8, and then for each of those, I've got 8 ways of choosing B and F. And for each of those totals, I've got 8 ways of choosing A and E, right? So this gives um, 7 times 8 times 8 times 8 options uh, but we do need to notice that this over counts uh, by a factor of two um, because we're told that um, you know point a b c d point e f g h um, and the other way around are considered to be the same solution so you know in amongst these options i've got for example you know that i've done like um uh, you know, I've, I've done a number for the first one and a, a different number for the second one, and I've also got exactly that same uh, number the, the other way around, right? So I've I've got the option uh, where I've taken you know D and H to be uh, two and eight. I've taken C and G to be uh, four and five. I've taken uh, B and F to be uh, seven and two, and I've taken you know A and E to be three and six, say, right? So I've got that as one of my options. Uh, 0. Point those, but I've also got 0. 0.6258 in there somewhere and 0. 0.3274 the other way around in there, and I, and, and I don't want to count those twice. So we need to divide the final answer uh, by uh, 2, so the answer is 7 times 8 times 8 times 8 all divided by 2, and we can either work that out as a number, it comes out to be 1792, or it says you can give your final answer as a product of prime numbers if you wish, right? So we can write uh, 8 as 2 cubed um, and use our rules of indices to say that we know this is 7 times 2 to the 9 divided by 2, so uh, 7 times uh, 2 to the 8, and uh, optionally for no extra marks, right, it's told us that this is a perfectly acceptable final answer, so we'll get full marks there. Um, we could also say that's 1,792. And again, you'd get full marks for just giving 1,792. No obligation to do the index form. So uh, there we go. Uh, that's question three all done. Uh, well done if you got that right.